Hello friends and welcome back to the ninth part of the series where we'll be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So in the previous few videos, we set up our Superbase table as well as our Superbase storage bucket for our posts. And in this video, we'll be actually adding the functionality to allow the user to upload a new post. Alright, so we are going to our new post page and when the user clicks on this upload image button, the user should be able to upload an image. So what we can do is we can click on the upload image button, we can go to actions and open the action flow editor. And we want to trigger the action on when the user taps the button. So we choose the on tap event. Now we want to add a new action. And for this action, Flutterflow actually already has this functionality built in. You can search for upload and we'll choose upload slash save media over here. For the upload type, we'll choose Superbase since we are using Superbase. And you can see here that two fields now appear, the bucket name as well as upload folder path. So we can go back to our Superbase dashboard under storage, and this will be our bucket name. So make sure that the bucket name is exactly the same as this name over here. And now for the upload photo path, click on our bucket, and this will be the name of our folder path. So images, all lowercase letters. We can allow the user to choose either camera or gallery. I think we'll just choose gallery for now because we have the camera function later. We can allow photo and allow video as well, but for now, let's just allow photo to make it easier. And the name, we'll just leave it as upload data underscore B98. And yep, it's that simple to actually allow the user to choose a photo from their gallery. So that's it. And now that we have allowed the user to choose the photo, we want to display it in the UI over here. So we can scroll down with the image which is selected all the way to path. You can click on this orange icon to set the value dynamically. And we'll go on the widget state. And you can see that there's this upload file URL option over here. So we can click on the upload file URL, which is basically the URL of the image that the user has just chosen. So we click on that. And now it'll display the uploaded file URL whenever the user uploads an image. However, there's one problem here that may not be apparent. That is when before the user uploads or chooses an image, this uploaded file URL will be null. So no image will be displayed over here, but we don't want that to happen. So we can click on this uploaded file URL. And you can see that there's an option to put in and key in a default variable value. So we can just go on the internet and search for default image. And search for default image. Let's just choose this one. I think that one looks okay. We can copy the image address and we'll paste it inside this default variable value. You can click on confirm. And you should see that the default image now appears over here. So, so it will show this image when the user first enters the page or if the user did not choose any image. All right, so now that the user is able to choose an image, we want to allow the user to go to actually put in the post captions. So that is done by clicking on next. We'll add an action on tap. And now we want to navigate to our new post details page. So we click on close. And then now whenever the user clicks on this, it'll bring the user to the new post details page. Now, we also want to show the image that the user had uploaded here. But in this page, we currently do not have any access to the uploaded file path. So what we can do when we want to pass data between two pages is to pass the data through page parameters over here. So with the new post details page selected, you can see that at the top right hand corner, there's this option to add new page parameters. So we can click on add parameter. We want to add a new parameter for uploaded image. For the type, it will be an image path over here. And we want to leave it as required. Actually, no, we don't want to leave it as required since the image can be null. And we'll just paste that default image path that we want inside the default parameter value. Alright, so now that we have defined a page parameter, we have to go back to our new post page and 
click on the next text again and whenever we navigate to our new post details page you see that we now can pass parameters over here so the value that we want to pass is our widget state and our uploaded file url so that's it now we have access to the data of our uploaded image in this new post details page so we can reflect the image in the ui over here so with the image selected you can scroll down to path once more now you can see that we have access to the uploaded image through our page parameters so that is done and over here it allows the user to type in their captions so when the user presses on share now we want to insert a new row inside our posts table so we can open the action flow editor here and on the on tap event we want to add a new action and we'll search for super base insert row for the table we want to insert it into our post table and here we can set some fields so what i like to do is i like to just add all the fields first and slowly remove them one by one for the id is automatically set so we can remove this for creator that is also automatically set but for posted by this is the user id of the user that is posting the image so we can click on this orange icon once more to set it dynamically and we can click on authenticated user and under authenticated user there's an option for user id so this is the currently authenticated users user id which is exactly what we want now for image path we can do the same thing and access it from our page parameters uploaded image now for the description this is the whatever captions the user types in the text view so any input from the user into our app is usually found in the widget state area just like how when the user uploaded the image it was also found from the widget state so you can access the captions from our widget state and you can see that the value of the text field can be accessed here we also don't need to set the like count as well as comment count since in the previous videos we already gave it a default value of zero so for the like count and comment count we can just remove these two fields and yeah that's basically it to insert a new row into superbase but after the row has been inserted we also want to navigate back to the home page so we can add an action and we can choose the navigate to action and we can just navigate the user back to the home page yep, so basically that's it it's that easy to insert new rows and new data into our super base table with flutterflow one more thing that we can do is we can add the back functionality so with the back icon selected what we want to do is we want to add an action to navigate back so we can navigate back to our previous screen we can also go to our new post page and for this close icon we can also on the on tap event we can also navigate back which is over here yep so that's basically it and let's try testing out right now Alright, so Tesma is just loaded up and let's first log into one of our accounts. You can see that we're brought to this page, which is the home page. And let's try. Oops, it looks like I actually forgot to add the bottom nav bar for this new post page. So let's quickly do that. So with the root of the new post page selected, we will show it on the nav bar. And for this, we'll do add post on new post. For the label and for the nav bar icon, it will be a plus sign. Let's see which one is good. I think this one will do. Yep. And I also want to change the order so to change the order of navbar and anything to do with navbar remember we have to go to settings and integrations and it's under navbar and app power over here so i'll put it over here yep then we can quickly reload our test mode all right so yep now we can access our new post page 
and you can see that when we first go into this page over here, it shows the default image since we haven't uploaded any images yet. So let's say we want to upload this image and it brings us to our file explorer, but in on the phone, but on the mobile phone, it'll bring you to your camera gallery. So let's say I want to upload this image of a funny cat. And you can see that the image is reflected here. So now let's go to next. And over here, we can type in some captions. Now, when we're done with the captions, we can click on share. You see, we are brought back to the home page. And when we check our Superbase table, you can see that now we have a new row inserted over here with the description as well as the image path. So if we take the image path and we paste it inside Google Chrome, you can see that it leads to this cat image over here that we uploaded. So just a quick recap of what we learned in today's video. Firstly, we learned how to insert rows into Superbase tables as well as Superbase storage buckets. We also learned a very key concept in Flutterflow, which is passing data between pages namely between our new post page as well as our new post details page through a page parameter. So that's a very key concept which we will use frequently in the upcoming videos as well. All right, so that wraps it up for today's video. In the next video, we'll be seeing how we can reflect all of our posts in Superbase inside our homepage in Flutterflow. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video.